is a lamp unto my feet. Your way is the only way for me. It's a narrow road that leads to life, but I want to be on it. It's a narrow road, but the mercy's wide, because you're good on your promise. I'll take you at your word. If you said it, I'll believe it. I've seen how good it works. Yeah. If you start it, you'll complete. Come on. Say, I'll take you at your word. You're good on your promise. You spoke. And the chaos fell in line For I know Cause I've seen it in my life It's a narrow road That leads to life But I want to be on it It's a narrow road But the mercy is wide Cause you're good on your promise I'll take you at your word. Hey! If you said it, I believe it. I've seen how good it works. If you start it, you'll complete it. I'll take you at your word. If you said it, I believe it. I've seen how good it works. Yeah. If you start said your grace is always enough you said your heart would never forget or forsake me Whoa. you said i'm saved you called me yours you said my future's full of your hope you've never failed so i know that you'll never fail me come on let's shout you said your love will never give up. You said your grace is always enough. You said your heart will never forget or Is anybody saved in this room? You said I'm saved. Come on. You said my future's full of your hope. You never I'll take you at your word. If you said it, I believe it. I've seen this is my testimony. Started your complete. I'll take you at your word. Hey, hey. Anybody have faith in this room? I'll take you at your word. Take you at your word. Oh, someone lift and pray. Hallelujah. You're so holy. Hey. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the end. Sing it again. 
A thousand generations Falling down in worship To sing the song of ages to them And all who've gone before us And all who will believe We'll sing the song of ages to them. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cries holy you are lifted high holy holy forever thank you Jesus and if you've been forgiven, and if you've been redeemed, sing the song forever to them. And if you walk in freedom, and if you bear his name, sing the song forever to them. We'll sing the song forever and amen and the angels cry holy all creation cries holy you are lifted high the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above oh you're better than anything i know all thrones and to me it's all powers oh it's yours jesus oh it's all yours hey we sing your name is the highest it's the highest your name come on it's the greatest, your name stands above them all. Through every throne and dominion, and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, holy, all creation cry. Holy, you are lifted high, yeah. Holy, holy forever. Yeah. Hear your people, hear your people sing. Holy to the King of Kings. Holy,
Spirit sound, rushing wind, fire of God, fall within. Holy Ghost, breathe on us. As we repent and turn from sin, revival embers smoldering. Breath of God, bring us into flame. Cause we need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. Hey, hallelujah. You reign above it all. There's no one like you, no one beside you. Hey. For hearts that burn with holy fear, purify in faith in deed, refine us fire, strengthen what remains. So we the church who bear your light, lamp of flame, city bright, king and kingdom come is what we pray. Fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. Come on, church, let's get desperate. Oh, holy anointing, the power of your presence. Pour your spirit out. Pour it out. Pour your spirit out. We sing, pour your Prophesy and sing. We can hear the wind blowing, blowing, blowing. Move upon our praise. Sons and daughters sing. We can hear the wind. Sing, let all the redeemed. Fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out. Oh, we need you, Jesus. Oh, we need you, Lord. We sing a holy anointing. Sing the power, the power of your presence. Pour your spirit out. We sing, pour your spirit out. Hey, sing, let. of heaven pour your spirit out pour your spirit out a holy anointing the power of your presence pour your spirit out 
for your spirit out. We sing death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the voice of sin and grace. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you were raised. For you are raised to life. have no equal now and forever God you reign we sing yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the name above all you have no right you have no Powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. Come on, lift your voice. What a powerful name it is. A name. What a powerful name it is. We sing nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name. You sing how great he's our God. Take me there, Aaron. Sing with me how great he's our God. Oh, sing how great, how great he's our God. Come on, let's take it back a little bit, yeah? Come on, let's say how great. How great is our God. Sing with me. Sing with me. How great is our God. And oh, we'll see how great. How great. song come on I said that's my cue that's an old school jam I'm ready 
I know that one. I'm going to sing with all my heart. Amen? Amen. Hey, this is the time in our church where we enter into a prayer. And I'm, I'm going to invite our family life group leaders, our ministers and directors to come on up. They're going to come and they're going to stand here at the stage at the altar area. And we're going to invite you to come on up, take a step of faith. If you have a prayer request, spoken and unspoken alike, We'd love to be able to pray for you, stand in the gap for you, trust Jesus, speak, pray, and just, just pray God's goodness and grace over your life. Why don't you let us do that this morning? We want to stand with you and not have you stand alone in your time of need. So come on up as we continue to worship the Lord together. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Sing how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Sing how great. Is our God sing with me? How great is our God? Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. You sing your the
Praise Him, all creatures here below. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining us this morning. 
What an amazing time it has already been. You're in the right place if you're weary, tired, you have joy. This is the place to be. We're so glad that you're here. We want to connect with you. If this is your very first time with us, we'd love to meet you. If this is your fifth time, tenth time, and you haven't connected yet, we'd love to help you get connected. I'd, I'd love to meet you. I'll be out in the lobby just to say hi, give you a handshake, and give you a gift from Luminate Church just to let you know we're so happy that you're here. We have lots of ways to get connected, and Jose and RC are going to let us know some of those things that are coming up. Amen. God bless you guys this morning. Amen. So good, feel so good to be in this presence. Amen. Feel so good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. My name's Jose, and I, uh, Sister Belinda said, Jose, I'm, this is my wife, Arcy, and we are honored to serve here at church. We are honored to serve the Lord in the life group ministry, and it's such a blessing to come every Thursday night and be part of life groups. But in addition to life groups, we also have Baptized California. This will be taking place on Saturday, May 18th, and here at church on Sundays, uh, May 19th. If you wish to be baptized at Huntington Beach, please uh, meet us there. Then we will also have baptisms here at Luminate Church on, May, on Sunday, May 19th. Baptisms will be held here Sunday after the 1030 service. The gathering right outside our grass area. And if you want to sign up, you can sign up uh, in the next, uh, next steps room. Uh, there will be a, a table inside. You can sign up for Saturday, May 18th or Sunday, May 19th. Also, Rooted. Yes, uh, we just launched Rooted this Thursday. Amen. Again. So Rooted just began this past Thursday. So if you don't know what Rooted is, we invite you to come and join. We do have registration going on. Uh, we did sell out on our books on Thursday yes, night, yes. but we were able to get a new batch of them this morning. So we have them here. Amen. So if you're interested, get your book before they get sell, so, sold out. They sell out really quick. They're $18. And that's the fee of the book. There's no fee of the class. It's just $18. Uh, we have plenty of rooted classrooms. We have for married. We have for men. We have for women. We have co-ed. We have young adults and we have young married. So there, we have plenty of, of space for you guys to connect. If you're not connected, uh, we invite you to get connected. Uh, you guys could register today. We have the books here and we'll see you this Thursday. Also, we have a short testimony on rooted of one of our rooted uh, facilitators, leaders, life group leaders that they're going to be showing, sharing with us. Debbie and Noe. Let's Sorry. put your hands together for Debbie and Noe. <laughs> Debbie and Noe lead our young married life group and rooted groups. Good morning, everyone. Um, as they said, my name is Debbie, and this is my husband, Noe Santiago. Um, we lead the YA married group. Um, and just giving a few testimony on our YA married group, um, we haven't been students of Rooted, but we have led to Rooted groups. Um, our first group was with Stephanie and Frankie. If you know them, they're great. Um, yeah, Woo! <laughs> um, but it was a great time. The first time we led Rooted, it was actually when Pastor Tommy first started the Thursday night groups, and it was a great way to just get connected. I know Sunday seems like the best time, but Thursday nights are really amazing because you get to connect closer, and especially um, with groups that's particular to what you're looking for or connection that you're looking for. As they said, there's women groups, men's groups, um, young adults and everything else. There's also youth on that night if you have kids. Um, but this um, time that we're leading Rooted, I feel like the Lord really knew whether or not um, when to bring it in. I didn't know when they were going to bring it back in, but I'm glad he brought it at this time. Our group has been going through some vulnerable moments and I feel... At the beginning, it was hard for us to come in and say, hey, I'm going to commit to Thursdays just because of how life has been going on. Um, but it has brought us such a, a community and ability to be vulnerable. Um, in case you guys don't know what Rooted covers, it also has a covenant of whether um, to be vulnerable. When people are vulnerable, to make sure you're keeping it within that group. So whatever it is that you do share that's private to your life, everybody there should be holding up to that covenant and keeping your information. Um, things that we do cover is city serve, community, uh, strongholds, prayer, and giving. 
Um, so if that speaks to you and something you want to grow in your relationship with Christ, I do urge you to come. We do talk about all those topics. And we just grow with other people. Do you have anything that you want to add? I think she said everything. But <laughs> oh, I guess just a plug. You know, we are trying to grow our young and married. So if there's any young and married couple out there that are looking for a community <clears throat> um, with, you know, people in the same situation, young and married, um, you know, you're more than welcome to join us on Thursdays. We accept. If you got a baby, no worries. We also have a baby with us. So I don't want you to feel afraid, like, that they're all welcome. So I think, yeah. Sorry, and last thing. Um, like I said, everybody's space is different at different times. And we do urge you to be um, truth when you're coming in on Thursdays. Um, I just told our group that this Thursday when we started. Um, sometimes you can't come in with a smile, and a lot of the people that are working with you, um, if they know your situation, they'll understand. So just know if you don't feel like coming in with a smile, the group that's there should be there to support you. So um, be honest, be vulnerable, and we'll be there to help and support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie and Noe. Let's give them a round of applause to our life group leaders. They do amazing work. Amen. So just like they said, we do have child care on Thursday nights. So if you're worried about where am I going to leave my child, we do have child care. And we also have youth. We have middle school and youth going on at the same time. With, amen. amen. <laughs> With that said, youth ministries, they're going to be going to convention pretty soon. Amen. So <laughs> we need to assist them. They're, so today they're, they have an a enchilada plate that they're selling. They did pre-sell tickets, but if you haven't bought your ticket, you could still purchase your enchilada plate ticket at the door. They're $10, and once again, it's so we could sponsor them and send them to convention. Amen? Amen. Also, uh, we're so excited. We have Grace. We have our women's event, Grace Women's Event coming up. It's going to be on May the 18th at 9 a.m. We do have a QR code. Uh, that way you could pay for it. It is $20. Um, with the QR code, we have a guest uh, singer, Lucia Parker, and our speaker is Melanie Foust. Uh, so we uh, are expecting a great blessing from the Lord. So um, if you know of any women that are not coming to this event, we encourage you to invite them to come. Also, if you miss out on the QR code, they have it up in the front in the information booth or the next step. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, where are the business leaders here in church? Yeah, all right. We got a few. <laughs> business Leaders Network Breakfast will be taking place April 27th at 7.30 here at Luminate Church inside the chapel. And registration is $10, and this includes breakfast. This is a great opportunity for all business leaders to connect and with others and network with others, uh, with your local businesses. So if you're interested in this breakfast event and networking, uh, see us at the table. There will be a table outside in the lobby. And lastly... Golden Torches, our seniors. Where are our seniors? Let's hear it for our seniors. Sunday Night Live will be taking place April 21st at 5 p.m. out in the lobby here at church. Doors open at 4.30. We have a special speaker, Don Maziola, speaking on the God of a second chance. I am so grateful for my second chance. Amen. And we are going to have worship that night by Sean Warnicky, and snacks and refreshments will be provided. Amen. I want to welcome Pastor Tommy, our, pa our pastor for Luminate Church. Thank you so much, everybody. All right. Apparently, when I was sitting down, I disconnected my mic. It happens. It happens. 
But hey, we got a really wonderful story that we're going to share with you today. So we're excited about the opportunity to do so. What I want to do first is thank you in advance for giving. Uh, we've been able to do some amazing things here at Luminate Church these past couple weeks. And we've, God's just been moving through the church in amazing ways. You're about to hear of some other exciting things that are happening of a missionary that we're going to take on. And uh, his name is Steve Kramer, him and his family. Come on, let's give Steve a big round of applause. He's got a phenomenal ministry. I'm going to allow him to share and speak for himself. But just in a minute, you're going to see a, a, a video right after he shares. So let's just pray and thank the Lord for what God's given us as you give today. Lord, we're just thankful today for, for your people, for this church, for our church family and friends, Lord God. Thank you for what you're doing in and through Illuminate, Lord. Thank you for the major move of God. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you, to bless you, and worship you in this way too, in our giving. Pray you bless these tithes and offerings. Use them to set other hearts on fire here near and far and everybody said amen amen Amen. thank you so much in advance church family hey uh i think that microphone's working now steve you can you can you can take it away just share a little bit i think this is the first time we've met right and thank you so much for coming out with you and your family today yeah well thank you pastor tommy illuminating church for having us um is that That's the first time I've ever been told my voice wasn't loud enough, so. <laughs> it's good to be here this morning. How many people believe God loves to do the impossible? Amen. See, when I was born, I was born three pounds, two and a half months, premature. Doctors came in and told my parents that if I even survived the night, I would never walk or be productive. But God had other plans. Ephesians 3.20 says... God is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine according to his power at work within us. I won't get into the whole story, but it left my parents absolutely, I was born diagnosed with cerebral palsy, it left them feeling hopeless, devastated. Anybody have dark times in life? But in Needles, California, a little Assembly of God church, they knocked on the door and said, can we help you move into, we're moving into this town. They said, can we help you move into the house? It was that simple act of kindness and compassion completely changed the trajectory of my life. So you're about to see a video that God takes the darkest valley of your life and wants to use it to bless not only you, but your neighbors, from the neighborhood to the nations. And so we want to thank you for partnering with us. Come see us at the back table later. Bless you. Thank you. 
discipleship, bringing them in to be a part of the local church, the family of God, and then, you know, disciples of Jesus always make more disciples. And that's what we're really doing. We think that this can actually be the potential to have a, a ministry template, if you will, that will not only um, be effective in the Netherlands, but also all the countries in Europe, the 55 countries in Europe, and then the rest of the world. So we're really looking for. So we're so excited about what we got to do in the Netherlands. Let's go into the Netherlands and, you know, to go to the Netherlands, you need people to send in to be partners. And so we're, we're asking you, ask the Holy Spirit if there's something specific that you can give financially. You know, we have this really clear need that we need in housing and insurance. And of course, our kids are growing, so they got to eat, but also our head is through a light in the Netherlands. So how much do you want the Lord to speak to you to give? Another part of that is prayer. Would you support us in prayer? We believe that God's able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine, but we got to ask. And so we're asking for people to pray on our behalf and partner with us as we go over to the Netherlands. Really is a beautiful moment, a beautiful family, and God's doing amazing things and taking them out and launching them out. And so we're looking forward to supporting Steve Kramer and adding him to our support list as missionaries. And want you to keep him in prayer and on your heart as you continue to give. And uh, hey, this week, uh, tax day, manana, I think it's the 15th, isn't it? All right. Well, that's, that's not a good way to open up a sermon. Come on, somebody. You, knew, you might need to file for an extension. The, uh, but my daughter was born on April 15th, which is tax day. So she's a tax day baby. And uh, so that's one of the reasons I, I, you know, try not to miss that day. And uh, she's going to be 17 tomorrow. Come on, somebody. Isabella. <laughs> Isabella Casares is going to be 17. So my second born will be 17 tomorrow. When she had a 50, she was 15 years old, she had a little quinceanera. I told her the, the meaning of the word quinceanera meant 15. So we told her she could invite 15 people to a party. Come on, somebody. <laughs> How many know I'm about to do the same thing to her? She can invite 17 this year. What's up? 17, 17 invitees. There you go. Keep the budget down. The, uh, but hey, I want to I wanna talk to you today where I really appreciate Dr. Tanya last week and Pastor Rudy Paniawa shared in our Spanish ministries, uh, Imperfectly Perfect. And the message series that we really had kind of uh, uh, dreamt up had to do with don't trip right over our imperfections because we're imperfectly perfect. And today I want to talk to you about don't trip over temptation. Don't trip over temptation. And it's funny because I was jogging on a treadmill, and I've been jogging on a treadmill a lot lately because it rains off and on, things of that nature, and the wind and things of that. So I thought, oh, let me just make it easy, get used to jogging on a treadmill, and it's softer on my knees. So here I am jogging on a treadmill, and I'm jogging on a treadmill, and so I figured, hey, I'll listen to an audible book. And then sometimes I'm jogging on a treadmill, and I'm thinking, hey, I'm going to listen and watch a YouTube video. And so uh, more, than, more often than not, I'm watching a YouTube video. And a couple of interesting things happen when you're watching a YouTube video. They keep inserting these commercials in your YouTube video. So I'm jogging, I'm running, these commercials keep coming up. And sometimes they'd be long commercials taking over the video. And so I'm jogging, I'm running, and, and uh, there's a YouTube video, and it's got a commercial. And then it has a little button on the bottom right corner. It says skip. And so I'm jogging and I'm running. I'm thinking, yeah, I could do it. I could do it. I could press that button, skip, and keep jogging. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and so I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And, and so I'm reaching for skip and I'm focused. I'm like, yeah, I'm like 21, man. I got balance. And so I, I reach, I press the button, and guess what happens? Yep, I tripped, but I did not fall down, and there is a difference. So I'm running, I'm tripping, I grab the bars, and then I start jogging again and looking around to see who was watching me. So, <laughs> so no, it's all right, nobody saw it, nobody saw me, man, I'm still cool, I'm still cool. And, uh, but there's a difference between tripping and falling down. 
right? But I could have eaten it, and it would have been pretty bad. Uh, but uh, thankfully, I survived. And, you know, I've, I've, I've tripped them many other times. I've tripped kind of walking the sidewalk, and you're on your cell phone, and you walk off the curb, and you didn't see the phone because you're paying attention to your cell phone. And, you know, I've tripped uh, stubbing my toe on the, on the bedpost in the corner. And, and when that happens, that's tragic, man. That thing is painful. I don't know what it is. It hurts like nothing else when you, when you cram your smash your toe on the bedpost there. So today's message is about don't trip over temptation. Don't trip over temptation. And what I want to do is I want to focus in on the fact that I think there are times in our lives where we really feel stuck. I think there are times in our lives where we really feel stuck and we're trying to hit, we're trying to, you know, we're going after something, we're, 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 we're you know, we're, we're trying to hit that button, we're trying to, set, you know, uh, uh, get over that frustration or hurry up something, or, or maybe we're trying to skip out on something and it's not a video. Maybe we're trying to skip out of a broken heart. Maybe we're trying to skip out of anger. Maybe we're trying to skip out of a disappointment. Maybe we're trying to skip, skip out of something that's missing in our lives and we're attempting to skip out and skip over part of the process to our healing and maybe we feel stuck and maybe sometimes feeling stuck has to do with with particular ways of 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 responding to temptations uh it could be like overeating it could be substance abuse it could be pornography it could be spending spending overspending it could be lying it could be gambling all these different ways that sometimes we feel stuck there's almost like this God's path, God's way, instead of what the enemy is t- trying to tempt you with. And so I want to look at what the Bible says because I want you to know there is a way of escape. There is a way out. There is a way forward. You can and you will overcome. Can somebody say amen? You don't always feel like it. It doesn't always, it doesn't always sense like that. And, and you're, not always, you're not always in the mindset. Sometimes we're weak. Sometimes we're tired. Sometimes there's drama going on. Sometimes we're devastated. Sometimes we're broken. Sometimes we're, 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 we're saddened. And it's really hard to get back up, possibly after you've slipped, after you've tripped, or after you've fallen, or after you went out for something that caused you to fall down. Do you win after something that caused you to fall down? Look at Second Corinthians, or excuse me, First Corinthians chapter 10. Look at the verse, Bible verse. It's on your screen as well. We're going to start with 1 Corinthians. This is the Apostle Paul writing the Corinthians, and he just finished talking about the Corinthians, uh, basically explaining to them that that the, the people of Israel had really struggled, had some wrestling matches prior, and going through the wilderness where they struggled with multiple challenges, uh, challenges and things of that nature. So he's warning them in verse 12, therefore let him who thinks he stands, 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 takes heed lest he fall. In other words, let the one who thinks he, he's got it all together, be careful and be mindful of the fact that he can be tempted and still trip or fall. Let Be careful of the one who's standing firm or the one who, who's been in it for a minute, maybe five months, five, five years or things of that nature. Be careful because there are, there are ways that the enemy is tricky and deceiving. He's good at what he does and, and bringing things down and lying and things of that nature, attempting to undermine and pull the rug out from under us. 
And so the Apostle Paul is already warning right there. He's saying, hey, this doesn't just apply to those that are new in the faith, but this is applies to everyone who has faith that currently you may be doing well. There may not be a struggle, but don't, 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 don't overlook the fact that the temptation is possible and there are ways that the enemy may still try to take you out or to undermine who you are, what you have, what you carry, or the difference you can make by obeying the Lord. So verse 12 says, therefore, let, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Verse 13 says, no temptation. Everybody say it would be no temptation. So notice what I said, no temptation, anything that promises to fulfill your desire at the expense of disobeying God. In other words, therefore, no temptation, the Bible says, has overtaken you such as is common to man. And the, the, the word overtaken... The word overtaken means no temptation has seized you, has grabbed a hold of you, has locked you in, has bear hugged you, right? No temptation has, has grabbed you by the coat and jacket demanding that you act, that, that, that you're not able to overcome. So, so notice what it is. Therefore, no temptation has, has come upon you such as, the Bible says, is common to man. So in that circle the word temptation, circle the word overtaken, and circle the word common. Because those are key words. Those are key words in what the Apostle Paul is talking about here. And I'm going to just keep reading. I'm going to come back to that. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond that what you are able. But with, with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear. And, you know, I was looking at this passage and I looked at it in multiple translations. And then I went back to the Greek. And so notice what happens when the Bible says, therefore, let, let him who thinks he stands take heed unless he fall. No temptation is overtaking you except that which is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. The word, the word beyond what you are able means your power and ability. It's the same root word from dunamis, but in here it's, it's different. It's a different version of dunamis, meaning your power and your ability. In other words, and apparently God gives you some sort of power and ability, not just to say no, but to go beyond and above and to overcome. So God apparently gives you some sort of power and ability to defeat the enemy, to overcome the temptation, to push through, to go over, to press beyond, and to get to the other side. So, so that word, you are able... It has to do with power and ability. And then the Bible says, look at the last part of the verse, but with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, that's a different word. Bearing it has to do with enduring, persevering, making your way through, or able to carry the load of whatever it is you've got to go through or suffer through because of it. So now to notice the Lord has got both sides of this. So, so, so you've got power and ability to overcome it. But this power and ability is going to get you through. Notice what's in the middle. Notice what's in the middle. But with, everybody say with. So I was, the reason I was looking at this scripture in the Greek, because I just wanted to break down the key terms and the words and the phrases. There are some translations that say, but when you are tempted... But when you are tempted, and if you notice, the Apostle Paul is already saying, you're going to be tempted. The people before you were tempted. The people in the faith a long time were tempted. The people just starting are going to be tempted. The people that have been in it for a minute are going to be tempted. And the people that have been here 10, 20, 30, 40 years with it will most likely be tempted. So notice what the Apostle Paul is saying. I, I believe the text fits better, not just with the Apostle Paul in verse 6 and following, talking about the cravings and lust and evil desires that lead you astray, idolatry, sexual immorality, and then he talks about tempting God and murmuring. So the Apostle Paul is already breaking it down. He says, hey, the temptation happening here are all the ways that we mess it up and that we fall right and so so here i believe the apostle paul is saying not but when you are tempted i believe the paul, the apostle paul says but with the temptation in other words god gives you the power that when you are tempted whenever it is that you are tempted with that temptation comes the way out can somebody say amen it's simultaneously both end you're not stuck, and you're not going to be in it forever. 
And you're not going to, it's not that this is never going to go away or that you're never going to overcome. It's not that there'll never be a day where you won't be free, can't live free, and will never experience freedom. That's not true. The Bible says that the temptation with that temptation, with that temptation, simultaneously comes a way of escape. God has already made a provision. God's already opened a door. God's already declared There's, this is the way. God's already shown a way out, a way that you're going to make it, a way that you're going to persevere. God's already broken open a, a hole at the end of the tunnel. Come on, somebody. God's already said, with this temptation, simultaneously, God has given you a way of escape. So let's look, let's look at, let's look at what, what, uh, what, what we mean by that a little bit more. Because the Bible says here, temptation, there is no temptation that is not common to man. In other words, sometimes we think our struggle is special. Come on, somebody. We think our struggle is special. We, 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 we think our, our difficulty, our, our addiction, we think our problem, our, our spending, our gambling, we think that's special. We think nobody else in the world has ever struggled with that. Nobody else in the world has ever struggled with, 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 with the, uh, anxiety. Nobody ever in the world has ever struggled with fear of the future. Nobody else in the world has ever struggled with anger and hatred and bitterness and revenge and things of that nature and unforgiveness. Nobody else, just me, right? Nobody has gone through what I'm, what I'm going through right now. Notice what the Apostle Paul says. He says all these temptations are common to humanity. They're common to existence. They're common to being alive. But there's a difference between tripping... And face planting, right? There's a difference. There's a difference. You still get to choose. You still get to decide. That is not removed from you. It is still within the dunamis, the dunastai, your ability to do so. It is still within your power to do so. To do what? To bear it, to endure it, to get through it, to find the way of escape. It's still there. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Come on. Because there's hope, folks. There is a way out. I'm going to just break down temptation. The truth about temptation, number one, and in your notes as well and on the screen. The truth about temptation, number one, the truth about temptation, it is not a sin to be tempted. It is not a sin to be tempted. Remember what the Bible says about Jesus in Hebrews. He's the great high priest. He's not a high priest that doesn't know. He's the one that does know. He's the one that has been tempted in every way that we have in our humanity. But the Bible says Jesus was tempted but did not sin. Jesus was tempted and did not sin. Well, notice what happened in the desert when he's wandering in the wilderness. After 40 days, then the devil going to get him. When? After 40 days. Not at the first day, but after 40 days. When he's weak, when he's tired, when he's hungry. Come on, somebody. The enemy knows when to attack. The enemy knows when to come after you. After the 40-day period, all of a sudden, Satan shows up, and he says, turn these rocks into bread. He says, he says, hey, he says, jump off of this cliff, and the Lord will send angels to capture you. He's trying to tempt God. And then he tells the devil, hey, look at all the kingdoms of the world, and, and if you bow down and worship me. And my wife always says, why would the devil tempt Jesus with something that already belongs to him? Come on, somebody. Why would the devil tempt you with something that already belongs to you? Isn't that funny? What you need, may, you may already have, you already possess. It's already there. Just got to work on it. Just got to develop it. Lord, the Lord's already blessed you with it. Amen? And number two, truth about temptation. The truth about temptation, you are not above being tempted. I know you're doing good. I know you're rolling. I know you got it together. And I know you've been in it, you know, for five weeks. Come on, somebody. I know you've been serving the Lord for five months or five years, and, and things are going great. But we are not above being tempted. Then notice what, what verse 12 of 1 Corinthians 10 here, right here in the, in the first verse, the apostle Paul speaking to the church. He says, take heed, be careful, be warned, be on the alert, be on the watch out. Don't let your cover down. Don't play with it. Come on, somebody. Don't act like you're above it. Don't act like, 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 like doing things that, that the enemy would use to take people down. It's not going to affect you. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to mess you up. It's not going to mess with your head or cause you to fall, cause you to sin. Don't go there. Don't do that. 
And so the Apostle Paul is warning all of us, you are not above being tempted. And verse 3 says, God, or excuse me, not verse 3, number 3, point number 3, God does not tempt you. The first blank is God does not tempt you. God does not tempt you. And here's what I mean by that. In James chapter 1, verse 13, the scripture talks about basically God will test you to prove what's there, to prove what you're made of, to prove what you got. God will allow you to go through a trial, through a difficulty to, to kind of shore up and own up and, and buckle up, right, and get stronger. And, and that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Come on, somebody. How many know when your kids make a mistake and you take the phone away and make them do chores for the rest of your life? Come on, somebody. My goal is still never to, never to wash dishes again until Jesus returns. So sometimes I just start making stuff up, tell my kids, oh, you're in trouble for that one. Watch the dishes. Come on. It's working. It's working. And so what happened? God doesn't tempt you. God will test you. But God's not going to tempt you to sin against the disobey the Lord. Satan tempts you. Satan will lure you. Satan will try you out. Satan will kind of direct you in. Taste this, do that, try that. The devil's good at that. And then sometimes the Bible says, and right here in James chapter 1, verse 13, our evil desires lead us to stray. Our evil desires lead us to try. Our evil desires lead us to dabble. Our evil desires lead us to sin against God, but it's not God tempting you. And then number four, the truth about temptation, number four, there is always a way out. Can somebody say amen? There is always a way out, folks. God always has a way of escape. God always makes a way of escape. God's, God always provides the way of escape. Sometimes you just miss the opportunities to get out of it. Sometimes you just miss the opportunities to, to, to turn that screen off. Sometimes you just miss the opportunity to text and call your accountability partner. partner. Sometimes you just miss the opportunity not to press purchase. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you just miss the opportunity that was your escape, but there was a way, right? There, God provides a way of escape. Notice simultaneously when the temptation appears, the Bible says with that temptation, the Lord provides a way of escape. There is always a way out. Here's a really, here's a really important point. Then I'm going to share a story with you next right here. It's, a, it's temptation is an invitation for you to rely on Christ. Temptation is an invitation for you to rely on Christ. Did you get that in your notes? So notice what happens. Sometimes temptation is a growth opportunity in your own faith and in your own walk to see what you're going to do, how you're going to react. Are you going to go the way of Jesus? Are you going to go the way of the Lord? Are you going to obey God, submit to God? You tripped, but you didn't fall. You tripped, but you're still running. And sometimes you trip. If you fall and you scrape your knee, that doesn't count as a complete fall. Come on, somebody. I've done that before, too. I bounced up magically. wah Bounce back up. <laughs> Did you fall? Oh, uh -uh, I'm good. I'm good. Your knee's all bleeding inside, blood running down your pants. Man, it's bad. You, you're all ripped up. So here's what happened. Uh, temptation is an invitation for you to really uh, rely on Christ and depend on the Lord. And, but sometimes, folks, relying on Jesus calls you to do things God's way. And God will make a way when you lose your way, but that way consists of confession, repentance, accountability that leads to reconciliation, right? You got to make up for all that drama you just caused. So... When I talk about confession and repentance and accountability that leads to reconciliation, so I was driving, was driving to a movie. You know how you, you promise your kids, you take them to the movies? I think Josiah was about 10 years old, and I had promised I'd take him to a movie. And, and I guess a lot of parents must have promised their kids they would take them to a movie. So then, so then the movie comes out. When the movie comes out, when it's like, all right, I got to deliver on the goods. I got I to gotta take them to the movie. So then, you know, we find a movie theater, and the time is right, and it's a matinee. We're going to save some money. Come on, somebody. 
I ain't paying $20 for a movie. I'm paying $8, $6. So here we are, we're cruising in, and it's been a while. And he's about 10 years old, so he's in the back seat. I'm in the front. And so we're cruising. We're driving into the, to the, to the uh, parking lot of the movie theater right there in Huntington Beach off of like Warner and uh, uh, Beach Boulevard. And another car is coming. It's like a Camaro or a Trans Am or something like that, kind of lower to the ground. And, um, and so that car is coming in. I'm coming in. And we come in. And so we're kind of like going to run into each other. So we start honking at each other. And yes, I was tripping. I was tripping. I was tripping. I was tripping. So he's yelling at me. I'm yelling at him. He's cussing. And I'm saying, you know, what's your problem, man? Are you kidding me? You know what I mean? I had the right away. So I'm we're all fired up and we're yelling at each other. So Bob, I just sped ahead and got in front of me. He's behind me. He's like trailing me. And he's trailing me. So we got to stop side. He's at the stop side. I go to the right. He goes to the right. I go to the left. He goes to the left. I'm going into the parking garage. And I'm thinking, good Lord, this psycho guy is going to follow me all the way into the parking garage. And I think that's it. And I, and, and I realize this after the fact. But if you get out of your car, that makes you the aggressor. Did you know that? You're in trouble with the law. That's a violation. So I'm just confessing now because it's on video too. I recognize my sin. I'm <laughs> confessing it <laughs> just in case that brother's watching. Come on, somebody. So, <laughs> so, so here I am. I open the door, man. I get out of the car. I said, bro, what's your problem? You know, are you kidding me? This and that. So then all of a sudden, remember it was like a Camaro Trans Am low to the ground? Well, when the gentleman steps out of the car, the car rose up about two feet. <laughs> so he was a giant of a man and a macho vato. <laughs> he had marine tats everywhere, bullet wounds, everything. I think the brother had fought in Iraq or something, man. So I'm like freaked out. I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to die today. Meet Jesus. <laughs> I'm ready, man. I'm, you know, God, forgive me for what I just did because coming soon, right? And so, so here he is. And, I, you know, when he, when he steps out of the car, I saw the light. <laughs> I said, it's going to happen. The, uh, and so, you know what I realized? God made a way of escape. It's the way of Jesus. It's the way of Jesus. Here's what I did. I said, I'm so sorry. I said, I'm so sorry. I said, I apologize for what just happened. I, you know, I, I'm sorry I jumped in front of you, man. That was my bad. It was all me, man. I'm really sorry. He gets out of the car, big old macho Mexican man with all the bullet wounds and marine tats. And I thought to myself, man, I, and I told him, hey, man, I'm just, I'm just coming to the movie theater with my son. We were both going to park in the parking garage, which is why he was following me. I look at his car. Here's this big, mean, macho vato about to beat me up. I look into his car. There's this little boy. And I thought, he's doing the same thing I am. I thought, man, am I wrong. Man, have I messed up. Here's pastor dad against marine dad. Who do you think is going to win? Not me, brother. Not me. And so I apologize. We park. Anyway, make a long story short, I go inside movie theater and I, you know, pay my tickets and I get in line and I'm standing there to get some popcorn and a slippery for my kid. And guess who's behind me? <laughs> so I literally turn around because I said, oh, Jesus. So I turn around. I said, hey, how's it going, man? He says, good. I said, is your son? Yeah, it's my son. I said, all right. I said, man, I said, hey, I'm sorry about everything. It's, it's all good. I said, okay, so I turned back around. See, I was going to offer to buy him popcorn and a Slurpee, but he said it was all good. So it's off now, brother. <laughs> you ain't getting no popcorn and no Slurpee because you said it was all good. I was going to make things right. <laughs> but isn't it funny and unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you see it, it's true. The Lord made a way of escape. But I got to decide whether I'm going to take it. Whether I'm going to do what God desires and requires, that's on me. I can't blame Jesus for that. Jesus didn't yell at that guy, act like he was going to beat him up. And said, oh. <laughs> Can you imagine? I almost got myself killed off of stupidity. <laughs> what was I thinking? And I was, this, I was one of the ministers on staff at Temple Cup. Mario said, man, you mean pastors aren't perfect either? Nope, I guess not. 
We can be crazy sometimes too. The, you could trip. Don't trip over temptation. Okay? There's a difference between tripping and falling. With your trip, God will allow you to make a way of escape. You get to choose. You're going to take it. Amen? Come on. Hey, let me wrap it up like this. Sometimes, you know, we want to change. We hope to change. We try to change. We're not sure if change is possible. Change is real. Real change is heart transformation. Real change is a heart transformation. But what happens? There's a misdirection to transformation, and that misdirection is sometimes we think it's first it's an encounter with God, and then it's all on me because God ain't got nothing to do with it. It's like, it's like you come and you say yes to Jesus, and then after on Sunday, and then you just like, it's between you and you alone on Monday through Saturday because God ain't with it. God's not, God's not with you. God's not, God, God's not involved. So sometimes it's misdirected transformation. We think first God, then me. And it's not exactly true. We can't live for God, serve God without God. Come on, somebody. The Bible says greater is he that is in me. The Bible doesn't say I'm greater because him. The Bible says greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But the Bible doesn't call me to go it alone on my own. You know, that's why I think rooted is so important. The rooted curriculum, my wife and I have done the rooted program at least three times. And so powerful, the, just the prayer, the transparency, the vulnerability, the, 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 the sharing, the dialogue, the growth opportunity forward. That's why I think our family life group ministry is so, so powerful on Thursday night at 7 p.m. You know, we also have family home groups that meet on different days throughout the week just in case Thursday night doesn't work for you. But, but, but it, it's kind of like not, not, it's not just God, then my turn. It's like, wait a second, there must be another way to go about doing this. Here's, a, here's, another, here's another misdirected path. The other misdirected way of thinking about it, like it's all God and none of me. Like God's going to, if God wants me to get a job, God's going to give me one. I ain't even going to apply. Come on, somebody. How many know you're going to be unemployed for a long time? If God, so, you, so you're at home and you're on the internet and you got that Amazon credit card and you just click, 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 click. And you don't even look, you don't even look at the balance. You know, you're just paying minimum $35 required, $45. You got like, like $4,000. You're like $35, right? But you're like, if God wants, to be debt, wants me to be debt free, God's going to let me win the lottery. Come on, somebody. You, you're going to be triply broke, right? But it's kind of like the misdirected transformation. Sometimes you say, you think all of God and none of me. And other times you think, oh, you know, God first, and then I got the rest. I'll handle this. I'll handle my marriage. I'll handle my kids. I'll handle the future. I'll handle my struggles and my drama. God, you know, I'll see you on Sunday. So both of those are misdirected paths to, to transformation. You know, the right way to do it and the proper way to do it in your notes, real change, real change is God through me. Real change is God through me. Why? Remember last, last week when I talked about when I said, grace does not leave you the way grace found you. Grace changes and transforms you. But, but, but God's not going to do that without you. But without God, you cannot. So it's really God through you that is the key. You know when, 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 when Rambo was about to kill me, and Conan the Barbarian was about to rip me to pieces. And Thor was about to thump me away, you know. Hey, wait a second. You mean there was something that I still had to do? Yes, I had to take the way of Jesus. I had to go the way of Christ, the way of confession, the way of repentance, the way of owning up, taking responsibility, and the way of offering you know, the olive branch in the sense of, hey, I'm sorry, you know, can, can we be good? Are we good? If he'd have said no, I'd have bought him two boxes of popcorn and two Slurpees, one for him, one for his son. I'd have hooked that brother up. But stand on your feet with me today. I, I'm, I'm making light of something that's very serious. The way to transformation is God through you. 
2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 says in your notes, God's grace is sufficient for you because God's power is made perfect in your weaknesses. And you know what? One of the verses that I love, and I don't know that we always realize how empowering this is for breaking, breaking chains, breaking bondages, and living free and overcoming our challenges and difficulties. It's, it's the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Somebody say amen. 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 Just with the time we have remaining, just bow your heads really quick. Just bow your heads. I just want to pray over the congregation. Now, you may have been, you may have said yes to Jesus last month, last year, or, or five years ago. It may have been a long time. But maybe you've been taking the path of, you know, God first, and then I'll handle the rest, Lord. I'm going to do it to the best of my knowledge and ability, and however it is that, that I've understood it so far, and, you know, I'm good, God. And maybe, maybe that just hasn't worked out the way you thought. Maybe you haven't seen the results that you thought you were going to experience or you're going to see because basically you said yes to Jesus and then you tried to do the rest on your own alone. I want to pray for you today. To surrender fully to the Lord working in you and through you and to you doing things God's way. And then maybe, maybe you just kind of misunderstood, you know, if God's going to do all this, it's going to be supernatural. The clouds are going to part, you know, uh, uh, all these prayer requests you're asking for are just going to drop from the sky and slap you in the face and land right in your lap. You know, that may not be the case. I'm not saying that it can never happen. But all of God and none of you isn't exactly what the Bible tells us to do. I think, first, I, I think first Corinthians warns us about God making a way of escape, and I think we get to choose, we get to decide. Notice God's ability, God's power, God's presence, God at work in us with no matter what happens and what comes our way. It's God working in and through you. I think that's the way forward. That's the way forward. Just bow your heads right now. Lord, I'm praying over the congregation today, Lord God. We thank you for, for the familia. We thank you for your people today, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing in the here and now. Thank you that you are with us, you're at work in us, and you are working through us. And God, I just pray for greater levels of surrender, Lord God, greater levels of surrender, greater levels of, of just submission, Lord God, submitting to you, crying out to you, seeking you, Lord, that as a church body and as a church family, we would stop trying to do it on our own, Lord. alone, God, but that we would unite, we would gather, we would join, we would, we would sign up, Lord God, to move forward in our faith and next steps, to move forward in our faith and in the family life groups, whether that's on Thursday or throughout the week. Some way, somehow, we would plug in and get in so that it's not just us on our own alone, Lord. And Lord, in those times where, Father, it's, we feel stuck. And we haven't moved, we haven't sensed the ability to move or the power to move. Lord, can you remind us today that through Christ, we can do all things. We can do this too. We can face that challenge. We can confront that situation. We can overcome that drama. Father, we can, we can, we can through the power of your spirit, that chain can be broken finally once and for all. We see a day in the future when we are fully free, God, and we declare it in our heart of hearts where there is reconciliation in our home, in the familia, where there is forgiveness flowing from heaven's throne because it began with us. We received it and we shared it. We pray for that today, God. God, you would work in and through us that we would choose you and choose your way. And just with your head bowed and your eyes closed, you're like, Pastor Tommy, man, I, I've been far from the Lord. I've never said yes to Jesus. I've never fully surrendered. I've never made a decision. Folks, real transformation starts with the heart transformation. Real change starts with the heart transformation. That's where it begins. It's God's power at work in you. That's where it begins. That's the invitation. That's the chance I want to give you today. 
Jesus didn't come to make you better. Jesus came to rescue you, to save you, to change you, to set you free. And it starts with a new heart. Just with your heads bowed, I just want to invite you right now, if you're saying, that's me, Pastor Tommy, include me in this prayer for salvation. I want that new heart you're talking about today. Just raise your hand. Just lift it up high so I can see you from up here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just lift it up high between you and the Lord. Just this muscle memory right here. You're saying, I mean it. I did it. I said it. I'm, I'm inviting Christ into my life. Just lift your hand up to the Lord and say, that's me, Pastor Tommy. Pray for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, big guy. Thank you, brother. Somebody else, just lift your hand up. Say, Pastor Tommy, that's me. I want to accept Christ into my life. I want to start today with my new heart and my new start. As somebody else, we got time here. I don't want to rush this moment. It's a significant moment. Amen. Thank you over there to the right as well. Thank you, big brother, right here. Amen. God is good. God is good. Thank you up at the top. Amen. 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 God is good. God is good. Thank you up at the top as well. I see you. All right, everybody, put your hand over your heart. Put your hand over your heart. Just say, Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for receiving me just as I am, imperfect, in need of you. I ask you today, forgive me of my sins. Wash and cleanse me. Make me whole, Lord, like only you can. I believe you lived and died you rose from that grave, and you did all that for me for, so I could be forgiven. And I receive that forgiveness today. And I choose to follow you, Jesus, all the days of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me an awesome church family, awesome Christian friends who know more than I do, who can teach me and show me the way. In Christ's name I pray. Amen and amen. Come on. God is good. Hey, if you made that decision today, we want to put a Bible in your hand. I'm going to encourage you to join us in Next Steps right after the service every Sunday so that you can continue to grow. God bless you, familia, family, and friends. Let the Lord use you to set another heart on fire this week. Amen.